It is one of the top priorities in modern society to efficiently process and store information which is exploding with the fourth industrial revolution. The US considers the semiconductor industry for information processing and storage directly related to national security. Many countries are striving for sufficient amounts of semiconductors within their own country or from their allies. In 2021, due to a shortage of semiconductors, many products, including automobiles, were in short supply. This led to prices increasing. Recently, in addition to producing high-performance semiconductors, implementing computer systems with high energy efficiency is becoming a hot topic in the semiconductor industry. To this end, there is a fierce competition to preoccupy the future technology of neuromorphic computing that mimics the nervous system of living organisms rather than depending on the conventional von Neumann computing system. The conventional von Neumann computing system has the following structure. There is a processing unit that processes and calculates information and a memory unit that is responsible for information storage. Since these two units are separate, the time and energy required for exchanging data between the two limit the speed and energy efficiency of the entire computing system. Meanwhile, the newly studied neuromorphic computing is literally a computing system that imitates the nervous system of living organisms. There are unit elements that act as neurons and synapses in the nervous system. These elements form networks like the nervous system. Recently, research is being conducted on various materials to mimic neurons and synapses, as well as devices based on these materials. In particular, ferroelectric materials are gaining great attention. The research teams, led by Professor Pang Minhyuk and Professor Huang Cho Song of Seoul National University, have been steadily studying ferroelectricity in hafnium oxide-based materials since 2012. They identified the mechanism for implementing a ferroelectric crystal structure in a metastable phase instead of being in a stable phase from an ultra-thin film form. The property of ferroelectricity can create more than two polarization states, even when no electric field is applied from the outside. Crystallographically, this means two or more states where both positive and negative ions are out of their average positions. That's why ferroelectricity is generated only in materials with special crystal structures. Hafnium oxide is a material that is already in use for computers. It is already widely used in transistor devices, which are basic devices that act as switches in semiconductors. Although, the crystal structure of hafnium oxide cannot generate ferroelectricity. The material is attracting worldwide attention. Since a German research team reported ferroelectricity for the first time in 2011, this ferroelectric new material can generate strong ferroelectricity even in ultra thin films of several nanometers and can cause switching between two polarization states with several voltages. That's why this material can be basically applied to binary-based memory devices. It is also possible to implement nanoelectronic devices with the size of several nanometers to several tens of nanometers in an industry-friendly process. However, since the ferroelectric crystal phase is metastable, it was our biggest challenge to understand why the ferroelectric crystal phase was created and how it was created. Our teams have long been conducting research to understand this mechanism. After years of research, we were also able to identify the mechanism by which metastable phase ferroelectric substances are formed. How to form the ferroelectric crystal phase of hafnium oxide, which was identified by the research teams, is as follows. First, an appropriate amount of doping is necessary for the hafnium oxide thin film. Various elements, including silicon, aluminium, zirconium and lanthanum, can be used as dopants. 
The first key to metastable phase generation is to ramp up this doped hafnium oxide and crystallize it in a metastable tetragonal phase at high temperatures. Dopants prevent crystallization at low temperatures and the monoclinic phase, which is a stable phase, from being generated. They also create a driving force to form a tetragonal phase at high temperatures. Second, rapid cooling helps overcome the high energy barrier in the tetragonal phase and prevent the transition to the monoclinic phase. This will complete the transition to the ferroelectric crystal phase, which can only be generated with low thermal energy. If you use similar methods, it is possible to create metastable phases in various material systems which are not seen in phase diagrams. In other words, it is possible to create unexpected properties by generating metastable phases in materials that people are currently conducting much research on and think they know well about. There's more to this. If this technology is combined with computer simulations, it will accelerate the development of new materials. Recently, the power of computers has been greatly upgraded, which made it possible to simulate various properties of materials with various crystal structures. Now, it has become a reality to manufacture metal-stable phases, which are expected to have special properties using a kinetic mechanism. Previously, it was considered the only way to manufacture ferroelectric devices to make ferroelectric substances that exist in a stable phase at room temperature. That's why it was very difficult to find the materials with a stable ferroelectric crystal phase among the materials suitable for semiconductor processes. Therefore, research on ferroelectric-based memory devices was inevitably limited in terms of materials. However, after years of study, we discovered that we can make metastable phases that were not seen in phase diagram just by efficiently controlling doping and heat treatment in half oxide, which is already used for semiconductors. We don't think that this principle is limited to half oxide or ferroelectric substances. There might be numerous materials that have this special metastable phase among industry-friendly materials currently used for various industries. Hafnium oxide belongs to materials that have a large difference in energy between a stable phase and a metastable phase. Clearly, there might be a number of materials in the natural world that can generate new properties in familiar materials in easier ways. We just don't know yet. According to Statista, the market size of AI semiconductors is expected to double in just five years from $32 billion in 2020 to $65 billion in 2025. The proportion AI semiconductors account for out of the total semiconductor market is also expected to soar from 11% in 2020 to 19% in 2025. Of course, ferroelectric-based AI semiconductors are not the main products yet, but this research accelerated product development and commercialization using hafnium oxide-based ferroelectric substances. The semiconductor industry is key to South Korea, with export of semiconductor products accounting for about 20% of total exports. The fact that the core technology for promising new materials in the semiconductor field was developed by Seoul National University's research teams is very meaningful for the future of industries in Korea. The research teams also expect that the value of this study will not stop at contributing to the future of the domestic semiconductor industry. We've only shown one example of hafnium oxide-based ferroelectric substances to material scientists and engineers. We expect that, based on our research, many new crystallographic structures and properties can be found from the materials that we think we are familiar with and know well. Many people think there will be nothing new from the materials that can be made by combining a few elements in the periodic table. But what if we can extend the range of crystal structures that are available to metastable phases? We certainly believe that 
the solutions to various problems required by human society can come from this. The research was recognized by the international community as identifying the mechanism for generating ferroelectric properties of new materials that can be used for next generation computing systems. The research will be published in the world's most prestigious journal of Nature Reviews Materials. The mechanism for generating metastable phases in hafnium oxide, which was identified by the research teams, presents a new methodology to modern society that is looking for new materials with new physical properties. Hopefully, these findings will provide a new breakthrough in addressing energy problems in the ICT field.